On this week's episode, we talk about the Leafs and how they like to blow leads, Christine Sinclair, Jake Paul, and Derek Henry's return to the Titans. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Points and Penalties, season two. For all our listeners, we'd like to remind you to please subscribe wherever your podcast. And for all our viewers, please subscribe on YouTube. Click this little button right down here in the little corner. And no matter how you check out PMP, please give us a like and follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Points Penalties. Once again, my name is Josh, and with me are my co-hosts, Kevin, Peter, and Jesse. Kevin, I'm going to start with you. What are you drinking tonight? Well, guys, um, because of the game, I had no choice but to go with a uh, Mad Tom. Oh, Oh, shit. Because either he looked mad, you either pissed him off, you either have uh, him come back and win, or you pissed him off enough where he just shat the bed. So I'm having a Mad Tom. It's from Muskoka Brewing. Now I believe this is a 6.4 percent, and Ooh. it's the first sip today. So let's give her a go. You're stone cold sober. That's first. No, he's just opening this beer for the first time today. Oh, uh, for uh, the beer. He's, oh, he's opened I other see. beers today. <laughs> oh, I've definitely opened other beers today. Let me tell you that. Sorry. Sorry. Misunderstood. No, it's good. I don't mind that at all. I mean, Mad Tom. Sorry, bud. You're pissed off. But it's good beer. And it is, uh, again, I think it's an IPA here. Yes, yeah, sir, it is. It's a West Coast IPA is what it is. I have one, too. Huh. I'm going to pass this on now to uh jesse what are you drinking there bud well i wouldn't i'm sure that tom is upset and i'm glad he is <laughs> he was a little too upset and came back which made me upset but boys i am drinking a russian imperial stout tonight in celebration of a ram's victory it is an extra strong beer very potent at a 10%. Fuck! Wow. <laughs> it is I from... mean, I mean, huh? I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it is from Walkerville Brewery. I did not Google where Walkerville Brewery is, but. Let's go, right? Jesse. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I had bought this like a month ago, too. But it was, it's, it's pretty good for a stout. I uh, I like having just one, and this one is seventy-five milliliters, so it's gonna ride me the whole way. Challenge! It's seven hundred and fifty milliliters. Ooh, got you with the dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's five hundred mil. I get to see- <laughs> Oh fuck, that's funny. (laughs) Yeah. So okay, so minus one for both of us. (laughs) Oh fuck. At least we got the challenge out of the way. Boys, I've been having a few vodkas with and and everything else. So there'll probably be more. (laughs) Peter, what are you having? Can't wait. That's excellent. I am having a Split Rock Brewing Company Skipper D's West Coast IPA. It's you. Not bad. 6.8%, which I thought was decently strong, but apparently not. What a wuss. All yeah, right. It's 473 milliliters. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I believe that you, can, one. <laughs> you can read. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah first taste for me too not bad not bad a bit uh hoppy but not bad josh why don't you round us out all right guys you know how i'm not too big on real dark beer but i got this one for two reasons one because it's high alcohol content even though it's not going to get me the crown that's why i was this off a few seconds ago <laughs> but i also got it because of the can uh it's called hades it's an imperial coffee stout and i got this because you know it's, it's my boy kev right and he likes all this yeah you know, just scary like a- devilish you know shit like that right 
So 9.2%. Oof. Fucker. Tough. That, tough yeah, that's loss. a tough one to lose that, on. That's a yeah, bad beat. So and, I, and a minus one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little insult to injury there. <laughs> So I had to crack this before. I probably shouldn't have so you could get my facial expressions that are the viewers on YouTube, but I had to anyway. And it tastes like coffee. Like it really does. And I don't like black coffee either. So that's <laughs> it's not great for me, this one, but uh, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I, I will definitely be able to get through this. Don't know if I'll get through the other one, but we'll Ooh. get through this one for sure. I believe in you. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. By the way, if I don't look like I'm paying attention, it's because the Bills game's on. Speaking of football, Jess, why don't you start us off this week? Let us know what's going on. You can do it. <laughs> All right, so we got Henry back after yeah. long-awaited return. He was originally expected out to be six to ten weeks of the injury. The injury happened on October 31st against the Colts. And he didn't play that well in that game. 2.4 yards per carry, 68 yards on 28 carries. So he was hurt. So his first game back was against the Bengals, where he had 20 carries for 62 yards. So it was a better better average of 3.1, and he had the big TD. So he was hurt for a while. And when I saw him, I thought this guy does not look 100%. I'm curious of you guys. What did you guys think of Henry's game? Yeah, he definitely didn't look 100%. And you can tell some of the hesitation he had, especially on that fourth uh, fourth down play. Uh, maybe if he's fully healthy, probably for sure if he's fully healthy, he's just barreling through that and moving the chains. There was also that two-point conversion that he didn't get yeah. to when they were a yard away. Yeah, exactly. And we're used to him just being automatic for that kind of thing. Wow and over, guys. But, yeah, he didn't look uh, for sure 100%. And that probably impacted the game. I have to oh. say the, the Bengals had a lot of injuries on that D-line, too, coming into this game. They are missing a lot. I, thought, I honestly thought Henry was going to run wild. But I agree with you, Peter. He's clearly not 100%. Yosh, what do you feel? I was definitely worried the first handoff. I was like, is this going to just – like, is he done after one handoff? Is it going to re-injure himself? And he was really that not that healthy at all. Uh, I think he was healthier than maybe I thought he initially was. You know, if maybe I, I was thinking maybe he's 50%. So maybe he was 60 or 70% out there. Um, you know – it's a tough one, right? The guy wants to be out there. He's trying to help his team win, do whatever you can. You're a superstar. So you're, you know, even at 60%, I'm going to take you over a, a bunch of other players. But I think what they were trying to do is maybe get up early, use them early, get up and then try and just hold them off and not have to play Henry down the stretch, which would help him, you know, obviously heal up a little more and would be better for the uh, AFC championship game. But alas, that's not going to happen. Um, I don't know. I'm not upset that they are out and he is not playing anymore and not because I get to make fun of you, Pete, but because I'm thinking about my fantasy team next year. I need this guy at hundred percent so I can three Pete. <laughs> okay. So that's yeah. my focus. That's my three focus. Pete. Yeah. I mean, like he'll be ready. He does have a steel yeah. plate in his foot though from that surgery for his foot. So that could be slowing him down and it'll be interesting to see where he goes to in cold weather games. I don't, don't remember how cold it was in Tennessee when they played that game. Is it a permanent steel plate? I'm not sure. Hmm. But I know they put a steel plate in his foot. I can't remember the injury, what it was called. Jones fracture. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a break in your foot. A fracture. Uh, I, I call it a broken foot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it hinders a guy that's like as big as him a bunch for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he was playing at 100 percent either, guys. I, I'd be lucky if he was even playing at 170. Well, sorry, 75 percent. I mean, I, I just watching him grabbing the ball didn't look like Henry to me. I mean, like you said, Pete, uh, guys, he just bowls through people, and it didn't seem like he he was really doing so. Uh, but the, that big run that the, the backup did, I would have started 
you know, giving that guy the ball. He was doing mm-hmm. a hell of a, yeah, he was doing a hell of a lot better than than what uh, the King Henry was doing. But once again, no, again, I don't didn't see him playing at a full hundred percent at all. So what's the number then for you guys that you can put him in at? Like where do you I, I said he... I said seventy five percent is where he. No, was but at. I mean, if you're the coach and and he says I'm seventy five percent, are is that good enough for you to put him in? Or do you say, yeah, you know what? I need you at 90% before I put you in. No, I still would have played him. But I think maybe they relied on him where maybe they shouldn't have. Um, maybe got him a few too many touches. Um, when obviously he didn't have – he wasn't himself, obviously. Um, but he's like he's the face of the team. If he wants to be there in, in, in the playoff game, I don't hate putting him in there. Yeah, I I hundred percent agree on this. Like, you gotta play them, and in those sort those short uh, yardage situations, I would have definitely had him in there. Like, you you would have gotten so much flack if you put that uh, Dante yeah. Foreman in. Like, you that would you don't do that. Like, you got to give credit to to uh, since he's line like the backups that were in because like I said, there was a lot of injuries on that line, and yeah. Trey Henderson got hurt a bit too. I believe he came back in, but he was sore and. And he's been a huge uh, free agent signing this year, but you you don't give it to anyone else besides King Henry, not a chance. And maybe with a few less INTs from uh, Mr. Tannehill, we're not having this conversation. Maybe it's wow, Henry yeah. didn't look 100, percent but they're through and carry on. We'll see how he does next week. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, not... he definitely broke their back there, Tannehill. Yeah. But we'll be talking about the both number ones on Saturday for number one seeds for the NFL. They were both knocked out by road teams. And then actually a road team won today. The Rams. Uh, but <laughs> they almost blew it. They made it way <laughs> too interesting than it needed to be. But that's, kind of reminded me of the – if they would have blown it, it kind of reminded me of that last Super Bowl where Brady exactly was like, like twenty eight to three, and yeah, but it wasn't the Super yeah. Bowl. No, <laughs> and the Rams won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an afterthought now. So uh, this hasn't happened since uh, first seeds losing the divisional round since two thousand and ten, th- and that was the year that the Patriots, when Brady was on it, uh, fell to the Jets, while the Falcons were eliminated by Green Bay. And that, and then Green Bay ended up winning Super Bowl 45. So, pretty interesting because, like, the 49ers are going to play the Rams now, and the 49ers have won six straight against the Rams. So, uh, Shanahan has a, definitely had uh, McVay's number for the last couple of years, and we'll see what happens in the playoffs. But anyways, we're talking about these ones. So they both ended in game-ending field goal kicks, game-winning field goal kicks, following fourth-quarter interception by your boy, Tanny Hill. And then Bengals kicker Evan McPherson netted a 52-yard field goal as time expired for Cincinnati in the AFC to get them to the AFC Championship. And this guy, this was – he was in my penalty box in season one with, against Green Bay – when no one wanted to win that game. The kickers kept missing field goals and everything like that, and he has re- uh, rebounded well, this rookie. He is doing really, really good. So I'm glad to see this. I'm glad because you don't see many kickers drafted. It's good to see it finally paying off. The other kicker that won the game for the 49ers was Robbie Gold, taking a 45-yarder as clock hit zero to give San Fran the 13-10 win which disintegrated on special teams, including a blocked punt for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. And they also had a block field goal. I can't remember what quarter that one was in, but they had a block. They had two blocks on special teams for the 49ers. And the 49ers special teams aren't that good either. But Green Bay's is clearly worse. So both teams were eliminated. Joe Burrow, Smoking Joe, threw for 340. Uh, 48 yards and an interception while Jimmy G completed 11 of 19 throws for 131 yards and a pick as well. 
So my question to you guys is after these number one seeds, what do you think has happened? So the question is, does Roger stay in Green Bay? And do the Titans look for to do a QB swap in the offseason, kind of like what the Rams did? Well, it's interesting that you put that all into one question, because wouldn't it be great to see Rodgers lead the Packers and come join the Titans? No. And... <laughs> no. Yes, it would. <laughs> no. But are you afraid of Rodgers' postseason? Because he has not been that good in the postseason. Have you seen well, Tammy Hill's postseason? <laughs> I mean, he's he's. If you look at it as a whole, he's he's probably had a better, minus this this time this game. But he he has been pretty good in the postseason for the Titans. Yeah. Like the the pay there the Patriots the, the Packers have gotten to the NFC Championship except for this year, which we most of us I believe thought would make it in our picks, mm-hmm. and yeah. they shit the bed. They came out swinging hard, too, because they had a touchdown on the first drive, and then they were rolling again, and then they had a fumble. Man, can those ruin drives. Fucking (laughs) terrible. But just like today, the fumbles were the issue. But, yeah, it was was cold there. I think it was like the fifth coldest at Lambeau in a postseason game. It was uh, was tough to hold on to that ball there. And and Rodgers couldn't get it done. So, like, do you, I get he is probably next to Brady, the next best quarterback in the league. Well, maybe, maybe Mahomes. He's up Josh there. Allen. Josh Allen, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's good, too. But he, he needs to be more consistent is, is Allen's part. Well, after this win today. Uh, I don't think Roger stays in Green Bay. I, I have a funny feeling he's just – too hurt and he's going to go elsewhere it's not going to be tennessee uh i don't know where it's going to be maybe the jets <laughs> no he said he said it no matter what he's not looking to play for a rebuilding team so it's definitely so, not the jets no, it's not, it's not. <laughs> but uh, actually i saw a meme about brady and it said brady it, you know might he's on his way to being the greatest of all time but he has one more task and it's him in a fucking jets uniform <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny uh so uh, no i think rogers moves on um although it would be good you know from a pr standpoint where you have you know you've had Favre who well, i guess Favre left too so who gives a fuck right i was gonna say Favre suck around but he didn't so i fucking caught myself before you fuckers could challenge me that Damn it! Good. <laughs> uh, but it's always good to see a guy, you know, come into the league and then you know retire at, with that same team, especially after a Hall of Fame career. But you know, he'll probably fuck off and go somewhere else. Maybe, yeah. maybe to a team like Atlanta. I mean, they're not rebuilding. They've got they've got a bunch of good pieces in there. They need some more. But I think you're going to see Ridley want to trade next year. To tell you the truth, maybe not if they get Aaron Rodgers. Maybe, but he also decided not really not to play for Atlanta. Well, did is he did he just not want to play for Atlanta, or does he actually have mental health issues? We don't know. It's de- it's definitely a bit of both. But he de- does realize he has to to get a paycheck. He has to play too. So yeah. he gets he's got to get his stuff together and figure it out because he's a he's a great player for Atlanta, but he definitely was not there this year. You know where I think Green or Aaron Rodgers is going is uh, Denver. Yeah, that's my that that's my hot take. There's been some some talk about that too, but it all I think it all I I bet you, like that's why Denver hasn't signed anyone to be their head coach. Waiting to hear if they can get Rogers mm-hmm. and then see what who which coach uh, Rogers wants to deal with. So then, who do we see in Tennessee? I mean, it's probably Tannehill again. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to start the year, probably. But it's I, – I, I'm trying to think of another quarterback in this offseason that w- that's going to be leaving. Like, I think Wentz is staying where he is. Um, I can't even think of another quarterback that really wants to leave. Oh, I guess Russell. Russell Wilson. Yeah, I mean, you've also got, you know, the likes of, like, a Nick Foles or a, or a Red Rifle, right? Like, I'm not saying that's an end-all answer, but – But do you, you think they're, he's better than Tannehill? Those guys, 
Nick Foles or I, I mean Nick Foles Andy could Dalton. he could in the no. playoffs maybe <laughs> I don't I don't think so yeah like he, he yeah you're right Nick Foles is good in the playoffs but I don't I don't think probably not I don't think they'll go for him because he he doesn't do too well in the regular season and if he does he he tends to get hurt a lot too in the regular season too um, what about a Tua there you know there's been talk about maybe him being moved with you know the whole Deshaun Watson thing I know that that's been kind of uh, that was snuffed, more Brian but... Flores, I think. So, like, now that Brian Flores is out of Miami, I think they're sticking with Tua. Right. They'll probably get an offensive guy. Like I said, Russell Wilson is the guy that might want to move, but I think he wants to go to, like, a, a bigger market, and Tennessee is not bad. So, I am I think the Titans want to get a different QB. If anything, I think they might draft him. I, do, I don't think they're going to try and get one to come to – Tennessee. It's a Tennessee. thin year for QBs, though, isn't it? In the draft. Yes, yes, it is. And they're going to be, you know, have a, pick, a, yeah. a bottom yeah. half pick, right? So. Yeah. From what I saw with AA Ron on the uh, on the aftermath, doing his little interviews, I don't see him coming back to Green Bay either. I don't know where he's going to go, but I don't see him going. Take back. a guess. You got to guess. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it would be nice to sit there and get rid of um, Mappy Tryon because I'd like to have a, an actual, I don't know, a decent court QB. So well, you'll be, be cool. a fucking Raider fan by next year. So yeah, I will be probably. I mean, it's not wrong about cheering for two. I mean, you're Chicago and Buffalo. I mean, yeah, I'm so. all right with it if it's AFC, <laughs> NFC. Right. So I, I, again, I just don't see a Ron coming back and wherever he goes, like you guys are saying, he wants a contender. So the biggest contender teams is probably going to pick him up. Yeah. But usually a contending team has got a quarterback. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like what about a Pittsburgh? Like, I know they probably don't want to go Ooh, old, like as old. That's a good like, take. That's a good right? take. I like that one. Yeah, I don't know if they have the money to do that though. And, and do they want to stay the same age bracket? Right. Because you're only going to get a handful more years out of Pittsburgh's all about winning. Doesn't matter. That's true. But that I didn't even think about them. That's a that's a great take. I, right. I like that one. That is pretty decent. Goes goes to the other side. He's good in cold weather. Like, yep. That's a good that, take. That is yeah. a good take there, Yosh. The Cleveland's on uh, it would be an option too. They have a half decent team there, except for Baker. <laughs> and that's who he'd be replacing, right? So I mean, like, that's a huge investment to throw away, too. That's a number yeah. one overall pick. It's Cleveland. I mean, the Rams can do that, but they, they, they can get other people. <laughs> that's really. what I mean. It's Cleveland. They'll be like, all right, let's just do it. <laughs> we got to go, We got to get some Ws. <laughs> We're going to start getting into some Jalil Jake Paul. Are we good with the fo- foosball? Have at her, boy. Right on, right on. Obviously, Jake Paul has hit the news again, guys. Um, there, this is the reason why I'm bringing him back into this. Uh, there's been some fighters that he's fought. Uh, he's fought a, um, a fellow YouTuber of um, N- Ezron Gibb. He's done an NBA player, Nate, Nate Robinson. Um, MMA player or fighter, Ben um, Aspirin. And obviously the UFC guy, Tyrone uh, Woodley, twice. Now, he obviously has been criticized in regards to um, not fighting any boxers. So he has uh, some people that he's actually called out. We have um, Kamara Usman. We have George Masvidal, Conor McGregor, and no other than Iron Mike Tyson, as rumor has it. U- Usman, is, what, what does he do? Like, is he an MMA guy or? Uh, yeah, he's a, a, an MMA guy. All right, just because your other guys, Mas- Masvidal and uh, McGregor, are obviously yeah. MMA UFC guys. dude. Yeah. yeah. So he's, he's called them out, and they're obviously, again, uh, that uh, Mike Tyson rumor. Now, I was watching um, a sports, uh, you know, commentary stuff on uh, the TV in the morning. And Dana White happened to be on this one. He was given nods in regards to his uh, fighters in the UFC or some coming back or some of the, you know, dual titles uh, in the UFC. And he was answering these questions. But the one came up again with Jake Paul. And Dana was given odds on this. If Jake Paul would fight in the UFC with a yes, with a plus 3,000, or a no with a minus 5,000. Now, his answer was totally, I don't know. And he gave that kind of little smirk, I don't know. 
that kind of tells me that I think there might be like a one day contract for this, uh, the guy to go in and actually get his ass whooped by uh, an actual UFC fighter than in a boxing ring. Now he has um, gone under some criticism in regards to not obviously fighting boxers. So he's actually called out a Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., which is an actual boxer. So By he's... Julio, do you mean Julio? Julio. Julio. <laughs> Julio. Julio. <laughs> so he's been offered at least two, one, one to $3 million in regards to taking this fight. Um, he said if he does do this, he wants at least 50% of the whole entire thing, not just a certain amount. Uh, there's some pay-per-view stuff that he also wants to get involved in. But he said if he loses this match against uh, Paul, that he would retire and take no money whatsoever which I think is pretty, you know, <laughs> bold to stay. But uh, so is this a fight? Like, are they actually fighting or is it still up in the air? It's still up in the air. Nothing's going to happen till after at least um, mid this year. If anything's going to happen with Jake Paul in regards to fighting who. Um, but Chavez Jr. is probably the, the only boxer that I guess would have a good shot to actually fight this guy. Now, I have some uh, thoughts in regards to who he should be fighting, but I'm going to ask you guys: Is there any any of you guys like you would like to see this guy fight? I mean, I'd prefer if he didn't fight because he's a fucking YouTuber. But because of your question here, uh, first off, I'm going to number one agree with Pete what he's going to give you. Uh, I'll let, I'll let him say that. How do but, you know? Yeah, I might just, <laughs> I have this crystal ball. <laughs> uh, but the guy for me that I think he needs to fight is Jorge uh, Madvidal because Madvidal has already said, come to the ring or come to the octagon. And I think he said he'll break his nose or he'll break his jaw, something to that effect. And I think if you're going to call these other guys out and have them come into your ring or, you know, your ring, you know, that he's a boxer, right. this guy, you know, you think you're a hot shot and uh, this guy from another uh, ring or another octagon is calling you out. I think you absolutely have to go and do this. So he needs to sign this contract and uh, one day just, it just needs to be a one day contract for the fight, whatever, or however long it needs to be to, to do the, uh, all the press and all that shit for the fight and blah, 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 sign it, fight them, get your ass whooped. And then don't fucking ever step into a ring or an octagon ever again. Stick to fucking YouTube. That's what I got to say about this. <laughs> but I also agree with Pete. <laughs> I agree with you. Sub <laughs> crystal ball. We're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> well, given that uh, you laid it up there so well, I'll go next. That's a beauty segue. <laughs> <laughs> so my my take here is I think he should fight any actual pro boxer that's in his weight class because he even uh even chavez jr i'm pretty sure is a lot smaller than paul is like he's 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 good at doing this where he sort of cherry picks smaller guys and guys that aren't boxers and then he boxes them and he wins it's a guy he i think he knows that he can kick the shit out of all the time exactly exactly he's all about the hype yeah and he's, look, I beat this guy that's smaller than me. I'm a fucking superstar. I had a different sport than he usually does. <laughs> Stupid. I think he should fight an actual pro boxer in his weight class, and we'll see if he can actually box or not. And I think he'll get dumped. Yeah, I 100% agree, man. That Chris Ball is perfect today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my pick is an actual boxer, but he's well above his age to be continue boxing, but I still think he can knock the shit out of him. So I picked Mike, Mike Tyson. I, I, I would really, really enjoy if he fucking fought him because I feel like Iron Mike would just knock him out. Oh, he, How he, old is Mike Tyson? Oh, this I, is a challenge here. Everybody's got to give it an, <laughs> an age here. I, I, I put him in his 50s. I think so, too. I mean... Yeah, I would I'd put him in maybe like late 50s is what I would say. Yeah. Like closer to 60. Are you guys going to give an actual age or are you just going to generalize? Oh, I'll, yeah, say, generalize. I'll say I'll say 50, I'll say 53. I'll say he's 53 years old. I prefer to generalize cuz I have fucking no idea. 
Me too. I have no idea either. That's, I'm just throwing a number out there. I'm saying about 53. See, I think he's in his late 50s. I don't think he's in his early 50s. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to say I'm gonna say 58. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that, that's right where I would say. But it doesn't matter. Like, it, he's he still knows how to hit. I guarantee you that. And he's he's gonna. It, it just doesn't come as fast anymore with the arthritis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He's gonna smoke a bunch of dope before the fucking fight, and then fucking the arthritis won't hurt him at all. So, like, I I'm waiting for this guy to actually take on someone that'll actually get him some respect. Because, like, yeah, he's a YouTuber. He gets it, boxing is dying a sport. We I think we talked about this before. Like, he 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 gets people to come to a sport that. They're trying to get more viewership and they're grabbing people from that watch his stuff on YouTube, right? And he also said he wanted to play in the NFL. He wanted to play safety in the NFL. And he said he would knock the socks off of the NFL ratings. I'm like, buddy, you are not going to change the NFL. The NFL is what it is. Oh, like, he'll change it because they won't allow YouTubers anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like, because he's not going to do anything in the NFL. Oh, you know what? Like, <laughs> As much as we bash like uh, Tannehill, like AJ Brown, fucking dominated that game. He should just kept throwing to AJ Brown. He was fucking killing it, and it'd be awesome to see uh, Jake Paul try and hit AJ Brown or AJ Brown just run him over. That would have been fucking the tits. I would actually cheer for the Titans. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's no, that's when you need a, a, a healthy right Derrick Henry. Oh. I hope oh, yeah. Derek Henry <laughs> giving him a stiff arm would be fucking sweet. He runs over regular NFL players. Like, exactly. Really, like, so, like, him running over there is nothing. Like, I, I just take on a wide receiver. That's all I'm saying. A small one. <laughs> a Cole Beasley. <laughs> he can he, he can take on, like, like, Cup has the most yak yards, but he's not, uh, he doesn't run over people like A.J. Brown or, like, uh, Mike Evans. Mike Evans runs over people, oh, uh, DBs. But they're the, massive. The guy I actually put in here for myself is uh, the Spider Anderson Silva. Now, the reasons why I picked him, because he actually fought Chavez Jr. and kicked his ass. So if this Paul wants to sit there and take a fighter that he's already been whipped by an MMA person, then bring Anderson Silva in, give him a shot, because I think Silva would knock him the fuck out. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, so you're Silva. saying bring Silva into the boxing ring? Yeah, bring Silva. Fight fight Silva before you bring in Chavez. I mean, bring him in. He he beat Chavez. So once you get someone in there that's already been beaten, like why why fight a guy that's already been, you know, ass kicked by an MMA guy? So that that's who scared. I think. Yeah, because he knows he's gonna get his ass whipped if he picks anybody else. Right. So that, that's where I got in regards to uh, Paul to fight next, but we'll see. It's going to be again with him. We get uh, regards to the mid this year that uh, he'll decide who he's going to fight or if there's going to even be a fight. I would like to see Anderson Silva. I, I didn't know that he beat Chavez, but yeah, I, that would be, I would just like to see him in the octagon ring again. This week's points and penalties MVP is Timo Meyer of the San Jose Sharks. Now, Timo became the first player in Sharks history to score five goals, one, two, three, four, five, in a single game in a 60 win against the LA Kings. Uh, Meyer is the fifth player in the NHL to, to score five goals in a game since 2000, uh, starting with Marion Gavrick back in 2007. Johan Franzen in 2011. I guarantee you a bunch of those are in front of the net. Uh, Patrick Laine in 2018. Mika Zabinajad in 2020. Uh, and then Timo. So a very rare feat to happen in the NHL. To put up five goals. Uh, and Timo is now on that short list. Uh, he's having a good season so far. 37 games in. He's got 21 goals. Five of them in this game, obviously. 25 assists for 46 points. Uh, so not 
too shabby at all uh, to start the season here for Timo. And uh, he's a hell of a player and our MVP for the week with a five goal performance. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I didn't see this game nor any of the highlights, so I don't have much to contribute. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't uh, get forgiveness here. No, this is yeah, <laughs> no man. This is this is crazy. Five goals. You know, we always talk about how you know even just how rare a hat trick or a natural hat trick is, right, Kev? What, what's a natural hat trick, Kev? Three goals in a row. All right, cool. Gotcha. In one period, or like, no, we're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, five goals uh, in a game is phenomenal. Um, ah, good for him, man. Good for the Sharks. Yeah. And you know, I mean, are they are the Sharks any good this year? Or uh, is that going to help them? You know what I mean? <laughs> is is him being uh, on fire uh, now going to going to help them propel them <laughs> up the standings? I mean, it helps. For sure. I don't know how good they are, actually. I don't pay that much attention to the to the West. Um, I don't know. Some NHL correspondent you are. Yeah. The worst. The worst. It's, oh. it's like I've been busy with other things. I don't know. It's weird. It's fucking like, likely slacking. <laughs> Could be. So anyway. Congrats on this guy. Congrats on this guy. This is impressive as shit. Yeah. So, to Timo Meyer being our MVP for episode three, season two. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers some tables. But he still didn't beat my man. He still did not beat Dale Sittler. Six goals. Six. Why don't you tell us about him again? Well, the Sittler, 10-point game? Never, ever, ever going to be touched. Wait. Pete, you just said, oh, sorry, since 2000. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, it might still be. You never know. <laughs> Never mind. That was. You know, I, I know he got ten points. I don't know. Six of them were goals, but I'll trust you, Kev. I'll trust you. Six goals. I mean, his last goal was behind the net, and it bounced off the Bruins' skate to go in. Anything this guy threw at the net was going in. It was I amazing. Think he should challenge him, Pete. I'm <laughs> not going to. No. I mean, we'd have to look through newspapers to figure this out. <laughs> Kev saw it live in black and white. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's word of mouth back then. <laughs> oh fuck you guys are so fucking mean the old man Kev over here fuck, it's all man. Good. guess it's who's all good. next in line too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys still increase in age at the same rate I do you fucks so, yeah, but, but who's older, older faster. <laughs> all right why don't we roll into someone else that could have been the MVP but uh, got a whole topic to themselves instead whole fucking topic christine sinclair she wins the best fifa special award and this award is uh, giving for excellence in association football uh, team and individual achievements now as we've known over, over the last 20 plus years christine sinclair has been phenomenal she is an olympic champ three-time medalist she's a five-time fifa world uh, world cup participant She's a CONCACAF champion and nine-time medalist, a Pan American Games champion, a two-time NWSL champion with the Portland Thorns, and she's the world's all-time leading international goal, goal scorer, men or women. She definitely deserves this, this award. And it's just crazy how good she has been for the last 21 years. And she's been at the top of her game for the whole friggin' time. And I think, for me, for sure, she is the best Canadian soccer player ever, male or female. I, I think we probably all agree on that. Maybe not. Maybe do you guys have any other any other players that are better than her, you think? Canadian nope. wise? I'm with you. No. So. Yeah, same here, bro. Boat. So with all her accolades and all the skill we see, you know, she's going to be. Uh, playing again in the next, she's you know kind of taking it year by year now. So she has she's not retired, but she's gonna play, and then she might retire, but she'll probably play. So with all this, uh, you know, potential time now to score more goals uh, on the international stage, I would like to know. And I, I don't want to compare her to to men at this point because I think it's we'll get on the whole big ball of wax. Uh, but the best all time female international soccer player is it Christine Sinclair? By far. 
Mm. I say so by far. I mean, when I when I saw that in the morning when um, the Viva gave that um, award to her, I honestly clapped, man. I was clapping because she definitely well deserves that. And I don't know. I, I don't. She's 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 she can be a definitely great mentor for for the young group coming in, or she she can be a great coach. Yeah. So I I think she is the greatest goal scorer of all time. I don't think she's the greatest player. Okay. Now, full, full disclosure, I do not know all that much about soccer or female soccer in general. But some quick research before this. I'm going to say that the best female soccer player is Marta Vierda da Silva of Brazil. <laughs> oh, oh, Marta. Okay. <laughs> Commonly known as Marta. Um, yeah. I'm going to say that she is the uh, the greatest player in general. Watson Sinclair is the greatest goal scorer. I mean, like, she's a superstar for sure, Marta. Um, I have to go with Chris, uh, Christina Sinclair just because, like, she got a lot of Canadian females into the game just because she was a superstar. Like, she's a huge inspiration. Like, Brazil has a lot of inspirations to get into soccer. But Sinclair, I think for men and women, is a huge inspiration. And, yeah, she's the best goal scorer. She is phenomenal. She's playing at an old age, but she's playing at a good midfield. And she's she knows she can't make those runs anymore. And she can pass the ball off. Like, she is still playing like Tom Brady level in her age. Like I believe she is the best just because what she can do for the Canadian sport and soccer. And she can score a bunch of goals, set up a bunch of people. And when you need to, she they free kicks and penalty kicks. No big deal. So I think she is one of the best. The closest I, I also like uh uh, Abby Wombat, Wombat. Uh, she was pretty good uh, against Canada. I believe she had pretty good uh, kick against them. Yeah, I don't remember the year, but they they sent Canada home packing. But she was a pretty good player too. But Marta was very very good as well for a Brazilian. But for what Sinclair has done for Canadian soccer, I think she is top shelf. And no one's up there with her. So uh, this might be a bit of a homer pick, but I'm definitely going to say that she's she's the best of all time. But I will give props to Marta. I think she probably has the best uh, ball handling. I was going to say feet handling, <laughs> ball handling. <laughs> um, I, I think she's dribbling, great. dribbling. Uh, she's great. <laughs> She's great with her feet. Uh, obviously, all you know, all soccer players should be, but she is phenomenal. She can do some some crazy things with the ball to get it around you. But overall, when it comes to all aspects of the game, for me, it's Sinclair. She can play offense. She can play some defense. Uh, you know, she's not going to be a defender, but she will come back and play defense when needed to. And she she's half decent at that as well, especially you know in her earlier days. Now she's a little bit slower, so it might be harder for her to catch up. Uh, you know, running back, but, but she doesn't get into bad positions because of all the experience she has. So because of all that, I'm going to say she's the best of all time. She has those goal scoring, uh, the goal scoring lead at 188. She's four up on Wambach who is retired. So they're the next person up is a ways down on the list, uh, active anyway. And I, I just like ne next up is Alex Morgan and she's got 115 active. Um, now, Alex Morgan's a great soccer player. Uh, she's even got more than Marta. Marta's still playing. She's got 113 international goals. So Marta isn't – Marta is a great player, but internationally she's had some fallbacks. Yeah, but keep in mind that, like, Canada and U.S. are at the pinnacle of women's soccer, and they always are. So they're always the ones that are playing more, and they're on better teams. In Brazil? I mean, Brazil yeah, is man. pretty fucking good. Man. Yeah, they're a good not, women's team, man. Not as good as the U.S. and Canada. I disagree. 
recently. I mean, I mean maybe, nobody's as good as Canada. But they're still we're the they're still champs. up there. They're still in the they're the same tier, I believe. Like like US was on their own tier at one point by themselves for a long time, uh-huh. and uh, Brazil was right there. Sweden was another good team, uh, women's team. So I think I don't think you can can never count out uh, the Brazilians in women's soccer at all because they 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 they're really good. Yeah, I agree, Jess. Uh, and then I agree also with you, Jess, when you said Wombach. She was a great player. She's number two on the list. She has 184 for her goals. Uh, and she has, you know, she was a great player throughout her, her entire career, um, internationally and club level. Um, but was that the, was that the, the Olympics of Wombat? Had, was it a penalty kick or a free kick? Uh, I can't remember if, which one it was, but I'm pretty sure it was the it Olympics was, and it was the bronze or wasn't, no, sorry, it was, no, it was the a bronze semifinal. game. It was a semi to get into. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was questionable, I believe, mm-hmm. the call. But yeah, she, she did her business kind of thing like that. She's she's a great goal scorer, but like those are one of the games that Sincl- you you thought Sinclair deserved to win that game, and yeah, 100%. she comes out next time, and like I said, she gets she becomes like a superhero to a lot of female athletes because she's phenomenal, man. Like she's yeah. just an absolute superstar in the game of soccer. Did, I mean, didn't I, she didn't she tie that game up though on the penalty kick in the uh, the Olympics, Sinclair? To make it one one. Which one are you um, talking about? Like this Olympics, the last Olympics that they 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 won the gold, because I believe that the other team was yeah, up. I'm thinking of the one before. No, oh. I was just thinking about this one. Whether they're up one nothing, and then Sinclair got um or someone got tackled or or there's a she definitely penalty. Took, she definitely took it. Yeah, she took the penalty kick to tie the game. No, she didn't. Challenge. Well, you're right. It was Je- it, was it was Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, it was, it was Jesse, Jesse Fleming. Yes, Jesse Fleming. Yep. Yeah, it was Jesse Fleming. Is she the one who took it? And then what? Uh, was the she was. She the was the one that was fouled in the box, I believe. And then the young cat kicked it in for them. I guess. I just thought she did. Yep. Well, like that should have been a challenge. Yeah, missed challenge. It's all yep. good in the hood. <laughs> I mean, I said it, but everybody else was talking, so you probably, you probably didn't hear me. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> but it's all good. Check the tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't have that technology here. Um, Maybe one day. Yeah. All right. So we got three that say Christine and one that's wrong. So there you go. <laughs> all right, Petey. I know you want to talk about your uh your Toronto Maple laughs. <laughs> no. It's the make me laughs. It's the oh, make me laugh. Sorry, the Toronto make me laugh. Sorry, my bad, my bad. So, That's, I think I think your pronunciation's off there, Kev. <laughs> uh, but I want to uh, see a Titans jersey. Where's the VY jersey? Yeah, it's football fucking <laughs> football Sunday, and the guys wearing a hockey. Get the shirt. memo, bro. <laughs> hey man, my team's out, so it's over. It's done. Uh, okay, let me know who wins. Whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the Leafs. Uh, maybe you're right, Kev. Maybe we are talking about the making the last year because we're talking about them blowing big leads. So we'll start with the past decade of four one leads blown by the Leafs. Obviously, starting with May 13th and 2013 against the Bruins, Game Seven, third period, blew the four one lead, kicked off this whole decade of shit. Uh, they were shit before that. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> um, okay, decade of blown leads. <laughs> just your entire childhood, pretty much. <laughs> it's it's <After>. adulthood. Adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it kind of went into adulthood too. <laughs> it's kind of gone to my childhood, though. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, the next season in uh, twenty November of twenty thirteen against the Penguins, blew a four one lead. Uh, in 2016 against the Jets, they blew a 4 nothing lead, which obviously turned into a 4-1 lead. Uh, in 2019 against the Canadians, blew a 4-1 lead. And in 2021, in February against the Senators, they blew a 5-1 lead. Lots of blown leads, and they lost all those games. Now this year, there have been six big blown leads, and they didn't lose all these games. Four times so far, they blew a two-goal lead. 
and twice they blew a 4-1 lead and let the other team tie it up. Um, now, the record in those games is 4-1-1. One, and one. Not terrible. But still, allowing these comebacks in these games, even if you are winning them, um, and capped off uh, this week, allowing five straight against the Rangers in their latest collapse. They were up 3-1, to one, and they ended up losing 6-3. to three. Oof. Yeah. I turned that game off. Fuck that. <laughs> Just save what, yourself was, the hassle. Don't turn what, it was on. Was it three one when you turned it off? You said, "Ah, they're gonna blow this." Fuck it. <laughs> I was just when I saw them coming back. I was like, "Yeah, they 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 just blew this." I mean, I was excited when they first started. Going, Holy fuck! Right on, right on. We're winning. We're winning. And I was like, "What the fuck? Are you kidding me?" Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. I thought you were fucking not cheering for anybody this year. Now you're like, "Oh, we're winning. We're winning." <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I see. How he got you. He got uh-huh. you, Ken. Uh-huh. Well, I see how it is. I believe Kev has been caught a few times on here about not cheering for the Leafs or not giving a shit about the Leafs is what <laughs> I believe he said. Yeah, so after that game against the Rangers, uh, Sheldon Keefe said that the team looked soft and purposeless uh, in their play, which uh, hopefully wakes them up. Um, so a question for you guys. Do you think this is an issue that will hurt the Leafs here in the long run? Hurts them all the time, man. I mean, but I mean, how did you turn the TV off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, but so this year it hasn't really hurt them that much. They're four one and one in these games. That's a excellent record in games when you're blowing two and three goal leads. All right, is this foreshadowing though for their dare I say playoffs? Yeah, this is, that's all that matters here. <laughs> all that matters is the playoffs. They got to win around for one and this team should be good enough to compete for stanley cups is this an issue that's going to hurt them in that regard always i mean they'll probably lose a game in the playoffs by blowing a lead like that you know i don't know if they could continue to win you know majority of the games uh when you when you blow those leads like they have been getting lucky uh maybe it's Maybe it's just because they got a little bit of extra goal scoring skill. They do have some some top end goal scorers, and they can, you know, they can come back after they the other team ties it up or what have you. Um, I don't yeah. think the past, like all those games you were talked about in 2013, 16, 19, I don't think those those were totally different teams. You know, sure, there's some some players that are the same there, but um, I, don't I don't think there is. If if there is anyone, it's Morgan Riley. But uh, even he might not have even been on the team in 2013. No, but 2019, there's yeah, 2019 was yeah. pretty close to this group. Yeah. Right. So, um, although it's you know same but different, I, I I don't think the past means anything. Uh, that was the past. This is this year. Now, being that there's four of them, like four times that they've blown those leads, you know, yeah, it's it's a bit concerning. Six I, really. Or sorry, four. six times. Yes, yes. Um. I don't know. I, I think they're, I think they need to have somebody in the room to, to keep them going. And that seems to be the problem is now you're, you're, you're up for one and you, you're coasting. Right. And then you fall back and then that's when they score. And now you got to scramble to try and win. Well, if you just keep putting the pedal to the metal every game, every time, no matter what, I think that's how you, that's how you would fix this is just keep the pedal to the metal and you got to have somebody on or in the room that will keep the team pedal to the metal. And to me, that falls on the, the three guys that are wearing the C or the two A's. Yeah. Those guys got to keep the fire going under <clears throat> the rest of the team to keep going. Hey, we're up 4 1. Let's make it 8 1. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if it's necessarily them falling into a show when this happens. Like if, if it was just, you know, the team scored back and forth goals and then you ended up winning the game 6-5. We're not having the same conversation. And it may be just a matter of luck that the Leafs scored a couple more in a row first before, like, Colorado was one of these. Colorado's a really good team. Um, so is it that bad that you gave up two goals to Colorado? Probably not. They're a really good team. And they're going to score some goals. So hopefully it's not, not a huge concern that's going to hurt these guys. 
I don't know if there's anything you guys would do to try to fix this problem. If we think it really is a problem, do you make a trade? Do you make some other move? Do you bench somebody? Do you fire somebody? I don't think the coach is anywhere near getting fired. So that's not on the table. Maybe a trade. I don't know. But who would you trade? Who would you get rid of? Honestly, right now, Pedro, who would you want off the Leafs? Uh, well, probably just um, Nick Ritchie because he costs a lot of money and he's cleared no. waivers. No, what do you know? What do you get for him? A pick? A uh, you, get, you get well, a pick's not going to help you to this right. year, right? So you won't get a pick, and you won't get any value. He was on waivers. Any team could have had him literally for free, and nobody wanted. Him. So you might have to pay, you know, here's Richie plus a pick, give us back something useful. I mean, like, you know, she said history doesn't belong to now or whatever. Like, I think it's still think it is because the whole organization hasn't won forever, the Stanley Cup. So it's I think a curse. It's still, it, it, okay. Well, it, it's part of the history. Like, they're up 4 1, everyone's on edge, everyone's trying not to make a mistake and shit goes down the toilet like like i said like you need like you said you got to just keep playing your game aggressive like you said have the the captain and the two a's like just go after it like make sure that these guys are not going to lose these games for you like keep them the players pumped like keep attacking don't go on defense don't don't play to lose right like and no offense, Peter, but that that's what uh, the Leafs have gotten over the last couple decade and a bit. Like, is they they play not to lose. So, and it's the same thing in almost any other sport. Don't play that way. Play your game, and you win. Like, just mistakes happen for sure, but you you can't change your game to try and not lose too many mistakes like it, it's it's it i understand it's tough to get in between each of that but you gotta play to win is what i would say that and that and that, that would what i would say for any sports team play to win don't worry about losing just play to fucking put the other team on put pressure what, on the other team what was that coach that said that kept on saying that you gotta play to win the game who was that? Oh, that was yeah. uh, that was playoffs. Yeah, you Herm play. Edwards. Yeah. Herm you Edwards play the win the game. That was the Herm only, Edwards. The only thing I think that Toronto is actually doing is um, increasing the the chances of them actually winning the cup because I think it was on a Monday night football game they put up the longest streaks in regards to not uh, winning, and Toronto Maple Leafs made Monday night football. And not, we're not even talking about, you know, hockey then. They're pulling up other football teams that have longest droughts and the Leafs. No, it was there I with think them. it was the longest droughts of each major sport. I think there it we go. was. Yeah, for yeah. baseball, football. Yeah, because you had the Cardinals in there. You had um, Cleveland in there. And yeah. Yeah. Who's At least the Leafs don't look so bad in that list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're only fourth. <laughs> 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 Out of all sports, Peter, they're only fourth. <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you said they made them look good. I was like, how? Because <laughs> they were worse. Yeah. So what do you do to fix it, Pete? I think you might see a little trade to shake up the lineup a little bit if, if this kind of thing continues. You'd like to keep the group together and keep it uh, consistent into the playoffs so the group could mesh. But I think as we get closer towards the trade deadline if there are any more games like this you probably see a little shake up but is a little sure. shake up going to do anything like a little like so you're saying you're not going to move any of the core guys right no no so what's a little shake up going to do then to me nothing if, if anything just hopefully wake somebody up but maybe not i mean they're not going to wake up if they've oh i wasn't traded the deadline's over i'm not going anywhere so i don't need to fucking play hard anymore i can just sit back again when we're up 4-1 Right. Just coast and just, just do coast. figure eights. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they see their buddy get traded away and it's, I don't know. Might wake him up. Might not. Maybe nothing happens. I'll have to wait and see. But come playoff time, they better be, better be sharp because the all, all 
odds are they're going to be playing one of the Florida teams, either Tampa or Florida. And those are two really good teams in the first round again. So, I mean, although this is concerning, I don't think it's a major issue because they have won those games. If this was a little different and it was, you know, one, four and one, that'd be a totally different story. Right. But they've won these games. They've come back, even though they, they gave up a bunch of goals or, you know, to let the other team tie it or what have you, they still came out with a W and that's what all, that's what matters no matter how you get there. So I don't think it's as concerning, but they should uh, definitely not blow leads. Yep. Well, Another player that blew a game, or at least a team that blew a game, is in our penalty box. Yeah, it's Yoshi's boy, Dak Prescott. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's your boy. Like Don't shake your head. He's your boy. Yeah, <laughs> he's your boy. All season, you're I, like, I had Dak's one good. fucking season in fantasy, and I that's was a fan. Well, let's, <laughs> let, we can definitely go back to the, the audio and listen yeah. how much you had a hard on. We, let's do we, that. Let's do that. We, you we, spend the time to do that, Jess. We've got the receipts. They're there. <laughs> we know he's your boy. I don't need to do that. I got we got followers, bud. <laughs> All right. So we <laughs> this week we got Dak in our uh, PMP penalty box after following the game against the 49ers. Cowboy fans threw objects onto the field, expressing their anger to the officiating crew. A lot of people thought it was towards the Cowboys. Nothing like the the Bills Mafia, right? They didn't throw anything like that. No? Okay. Carry on. There was no, touch, there was no touchdown. Oh, okay. Well, I just figured, you know, you just throw something on there too because they're a bunch of dicks. Bunch of dicks, yeah. They, they, were, they, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were there <laughs> for sure. So <laughs> Dak had initially thought the fans were throwing bottles and trash at the players and expressed extreme disappointment. Makes sense. But when Dak was told the fans were aiming for the refs, he said, credit on them, credit on them. Good job, good job. Does not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so after Dak apologized in a series of tweets following the day saying he hold the refs in the highest regard, blah, blah, blah. I deeply regret the comments I made regarding the officials after the game. I was caught up in the emotion of disappointing loss and my words were uncalled for and unfair. You think the NFL got to him there? <laughs> <laughs> he, so, probably, he probably got tuned up a bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I'm I can't remember if he was fined or not, but I would assume he must have been at some point. But uh so the huge play at the end of the game, why did bring up this emotion, everything like that was they call the quarterback draw. Dak got a big play and he ran a little bit too far. The ref that was to go to spot the ball was way in the backfield. He's slow as fuck is what that guy was. Uh, well, it didn't, it didn't, how much time was, how much time was left when they ran this draw with no time outs? Not much. Eight seconds, yeah. maybe? Yeah, I, was no, say, I, I think it was, it was like it was 13. In the, six. It was in it was the like teens. 13, yeah. It was in the low teens kind of thing like that, but it was not enough time, and it didn't help that no one got out of the way for the quarterback to or the ref to come and like touch the ball. The ref, all the ref has to do is touch the ball. If you said it, that they have to touch the ball. But if the ref doesn't like your placement because they're going by what the previous ref has has marked the ball as, so they end up moving the ball back a bit. So you have to like if you're someone, especially Prescott, who's the quarterback who should know this shit, get the fuck out of the way. Well, it's not even just get out of the way. It's like okay, you know where the ref is, place at the place, all the ref has to do is touch the ball, and then you can spike it. That did not happen. Him and the O-line got in the way because they were ready to spike it without the ref touching it. And, yeah, the clock ran out. So, yeah. so, so I know I, I, I play that off as what I think it is, but uh, whose fault on, was on the last play do you blame? The ref? Dak, what do you guys think? It's, def it's definitely not the ref. No, ref no. The ref was chugging along, trying to do his job. He, not get his fault. Whoever decided, whoever decided a draw was the right thing to do there with 13 seconds left and no timeouts, it's their fault. I don't know if Dak made that call or if a coach made that call. That's, that's who I blame. 
That's a I bad think, choice. I think but it I, was a great call. I think it, I think Dak needs to know that he needs to get the fuck down quicker. Hmm. I think because it, it was a far? It, was, it was a short. It was a short to the first down. He was well past the first down. I but, think. But even refs, knowing that. But even knowing that. Get the fuck out of the way so the ref can touch the ball. Of course, of course, he was an idiot there, and so was so was the O line. Yeah, I saw I saw a formation that uh, somebody threw out there on the interwebs where they should do for a spike ball situation, where it's the the center and the quarterback are in the middle, the guards are like five yards away from them. Get in there, yes. Because so why why not? Between. Why not have lots of space for the ref to run and touch Fucking the ball? Touch the ball. You're spiking it anyway. Right. No one's getting to you. Right. Yeah, what's a what's a yard at that point, right? Yeah, like just make sure that the like open up the red sea, like, like yeah, that's that right, ref, ref in there. That's right. Yeah, if that would have yeah. happened, I think you would have still had at least three seconds left. At least to, three seconds left. Pass in the end zone to try sure. and win this e- game. Exactly, but you know that badass centerman and the Dak Prescott didn't get out of the way. See, I don't, I don't like the play call either, Pete. I, I think the play call on the draw is, although he, he got the first down, you know, and yeah, you can argue, Jesse, he should have, as soon as he got the first down, he should have slid to, to kill the clock or not to kill the clock, but to be able to kill the play and get your boys up there. Um, I think that you have, you have got some great receivers, use them, like throw a little, a little up and out for the three yards or, you know, something a bootleg, you know, play action, something the play action might take a little bit of extra time, you know, to try and get it to so your out of bounds or whatever, but who's who a play action going to fool at that time too. Fair enough. Yeah, but a, a bootleg, <laughs> you know, a bootleg to, to CD lamb, like, you know, CD was pretty much fucking invisible the whole game. Like this is a guy you got to get involved. And, you know, if you got involved earlier in the, in the game, then they tried to, but there was just, Every time he touched the ball, there was a penalty. And that sucks okay. on him. <laughs> yeah, well, that was th- that's the whole thing against the refs, right? This is this is why Dak was given some sh- so much shit. Well, part of the reason. I think the main reason was because he didn't have the time to spike the ball. But see, I think it was a good play call. It worked. I just thought um Dak got too greedy. He took too many yards. He knew what the time limit was on that play, and he took too long. And then he didn't let the fucking ref go and touch the ball. Yeah, and, and McCarthy did say that they have practiced that every week, the same play. They practice it every week, and they can do it, it most times in the allotted amount of time where they can are able to get the spike. So, you know, McCarthy believed that because of their practice and what they have done there, that they were able, they would be able to get it done. But you know, that's where that's where I'm saying this falls on Dak. He took he he got too greedy. Like he had no one in front. Like again, he's trying to take extra yards, but a Super Bowl winning quarterback doesn't do that. But why are you taking a chance though, as the play caller, that this may or may not get you know be able to get spiked? Like that's where I throw the ball to the outside, try and stop the clock, and if you fuck it up. I think you know, what happened you, you try you have one more chance likely right so what, what was the what down was it it I'm was like sure. a it was like it was like a third or fourth that fourth down kind of thing like that it was it was late in the the down so they needed that first down and they wanted to like to my specific they weren't trying to get that many that much yardage but it was there so Dak took it yeah but he took he took too many so I think they called a, a good play call. They were going to get down on it. The ref wouldn't be so fucking far away at that point, and they could take a couple of shots to the end zone. But at that point, they you need have no a touchdown. Time left anyway. Well, not really. You don't have time left anyway. You only have time for one more play if you do that right. Mm-hmm. So really, what are you gaining by doing a draw for five yards? You can get five yards closer to the end zone. And you're still well, you, you. If you get five yards, you might be able to get two plays in. It's unlikely, but you might no be way. able to. No way. If you if you do a, that draw and you got to spike the ball with 13 seconds left, you're at less than five seconds left when that thing spiked. Like I said, you got two or three seconds. Yeah. Enough for one you, play. One you play. might you That's might it. also try and get closer too with a quick out and to get that one second left on the clock. To do what then? I mean, again, you get one shot. You're close. The end you're, close off. you're closer and and you can get there. The, it opens up a lot more. At the point, like what he was taking was. 
was there wasn't much time because he got he took a lot more yards than he needed to take. Mm -hmm. But they were pretty far off to begin with, too. Like even if you are like if it was say say it was third down, I can't remember. I, I honestly don't look down at this. Say it was third down, you're still chucking the ball from like the 30 late 30s to 40 yard line like you're 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 gonna try and take two shots from there instead of get a first down and get closer yeah that's what i would do really i would rather get closer and it opens up the options like you may have one less play but but you're closer did they need a touchdown yeah they need a yeah. touchdown yeah i would fucking toss up two hail marys yeah i think i would have too man well, too much chance, right? You don't get a chance to win the game if you do, if you run that draw. Like, sure, it's you're, possible. You're playing not you to lose. You, you do the chance. So you just went too far. You but went, you, but greedy. the chance is this big instead of this big, right? If you throw, you the think ball hail twice, marys give you that big of a chance? A forty yard pass isn't a hail mary, man. That's just a fucking standard pass in the NFL. Like, sure, it's a little longer than the well, old. But 20 when everyone pass. knows that you're going for that forty yard bomb, you're gonna have tons of people in the end zone. Uh, you might fucking open up somebody like, underneath too. Like unless your name fucking A Rod or or Murray, like you're not fucking Dak isn't gonna do that. No, I mean he's got a fucking they, arm on him. Like it's forty yards is against not the 49ers hurt. defense. No, no, not they, a chance. They still know that you're doing that next play anyway. If you mm. run the draw successfully, and you're a little bit closer, you're still going. But you, you, it's not a hail mary at that point. Thirty five yards and forty yards. What's the fucking difference? Yeah. He is he, it's it's not 35 yards he, he was a lot closer than that but at the same time too you can do an easy hook and ladder at that point but your defense playing prevent you can't regardless. do a hook and ladder because the time's gonna run out it's the end of the game you're going on one play left i mean you well, you better be throwing it to the fucking ladder <laughs> like, you're throwing you're, it right i i think it was a great play call and i think that dax screwed this up but that's my opinion I agree with you. Uh, I mean, Zach, you're, Zach you're wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> I got you back there. You can't Jesse. say anything because nothing happened there. Right. I'm wrong, but but nothing happened. Well, Obviously, they they thought that uh, Noodle the and their Dak couldn't couldn't get it in the end zone is what it was. Maybe maybe he could have. That's why you're wrong. <laughs> Either way, you're wrong, man. What I got you. wasn't I got Peter last year? You were saying like, "Oh, it was a good play by them kicking a field goal." for Green Bay at the end, and they ended up losing in the NFC Championship? Uh, I think so, yeah. But then Yeah, you're else. wrong. You're wrong I had, there. No, I, had, <laughs> I, I had reasons for that. Thing. Yeah, it was, it was wrong, though. Uh, no, <laughs> they did was, exactly what you said, and they that lost. That was right. And they yeah, lost. That, they lost. They yeah. lost in what exactly you said. And because of other extenuating factors. What is the difference? <laughs> this is extenuating to circus cases as well. I said that the... He nope. got greedy. Nope. nope. Drive back oh, late. You're someone's, wrong. Someone's fucking <laughs> greedy here. Yeah, Dak. <laughs> All right, guys. So quickly, should Dak be punished for his, his comments about the refs? Probably. And what is that? Suspension or fine? Just fine. If anything, yeah, fine. if anything, it's just a fine. You're not gonna. Yeah, I don't. Is is there any precedent for suspending someone on what they say? I think if you criticize the refs, there might be, but I, not that I've heard of anything, you know, recently, but for sure he needs yeah. to get fined. You know, you got to curb that. You can, oh, The refs could fucking suck dick. They can make the, the whole wrong calls, right, Jess, in the playoffs against the Saints? You know, right call, <laughs> right call, wrong call, right? I mean, they make bad calls, but they you can't. a bunch of bad calls. But you can't game. criticize them. I mean, it, they're human too, right? So uh, Shit happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you can criticize. You can't say. Oh, that, you can criticize. Yeah. For it's sure. it's good to yeah. throw shit at them. Yeah. That, that's 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 upside. For sure. I th I think what uh, Dak here did was kind of stupid. Where he said credit on them, and he said, "Oh, they shouldn't be doing that or whatever." But like, I don't I don't mind players taking shots at fucking refs. They I agree. definitely they definitely deserve it at times, and. For them to get fine, it's their money. They do what they want, and it's the end of the season. So he, I think Dak went the wrong way of doing it with uh, saying that they shouldn't be throwing trash at players, but it's credit to them when they throw trash at fucking refs. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you can't just fucking flip flop like that real quick. Like, <laughs> stay on the same page, bud. But uh, cre- uh, giving shit to the refs, I, I'm full, full born for. Uh, this taunting bullshit. I think that's got to stop. I mean, I should I should be excited for something that I've done and not be a flag for throwing us being guards to being taunted. Fuck I you. agree. That's bullshit. But do we That's know it. what they're saying? Do you know that he's saying, ha, I made a good play, or is he saying, ha, your mother? Like, we don't know what he's saying, right? So so they Who could cares? be getting – no, but they could be getting the taunting call because he's – the guy is saying something that he shouldn't be saying. It could be a racist remark. It could be anything, right? In I that agree. instance, like, then throw a fucking flag. Yeah. But if it's like, ha, I stopped you on four down – that's fine. You know, well, so there was one today with with Sue. Yeah, with Bray. Yeah, with the just yeah. throwing at him, and I was like, I "That's because your boy fucking kicked him. He was yeah, all man. pissed off." Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. He, he, he threw he, his legs in the air. I saw that too. He threw his legs in the air as Adam, and he's like, "I agree that you, that, that play did not need to be flagged at all." And I I hate the taunting penalty with a passion. It is the stupidest rule. And I, see, I'm all right with Sue bitching there because he. Because you're fucking. Yeah, like I kicked him, nuts. him. He stood yeah, up man. and he kicked him. No, I'm joking. There was a little bit of a flinch of his leg, but I don't know if he actually kicked him. But for I mean, sure, like, I'd be this, pissed off too. This is a guy that has has kicked people in the face too. So yeah, fair enough. What goes around comes around. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's like Stompy's Car- brother. Karma's a bitch. <laughs> remember Stompy? Yeah, you do you remember Stompy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Played for the dirty Titans team. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to get a move on here. We're running a little long today. Who wants to go over our uh, challenges and scores? Oh, I can do that. It's fairly straightforward. It's uh, just the one challenge right off the bat. No one knows how big Justin Bieber is. (laughs) (laughs) Josh thought it was 750. Jesse thought it was 75. It's somewhere in between. It was actually 500. (laughs) they They both get a minus one on that. And that's it. So that brings our season totals. Uh, Peter is plus three. Kevin is at minus three. Yeah. Jesse drops to plus three. And Josh drops to minus two. Seems like the trends from uh, last season are <laughs> coming hey, back shut again. Up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, God. yes. We just need a big washer tournament in the middle. That's all I need. No, no more washer tournaments. <laughs> hey, we can have a washer <laughs> tournament, but it's not going to be as heavily weighted. No, that's for fucking sure. Not that. No, exactly. <laughs> oh, Why? You keep it all the good in there, you, Kev. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was there. I mean, I was, you know, but no, that was too many points. I think it was the exact amount of points. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, like you're not you're not even the best one here. Like uh, you you came through in the clutch in that tournament, but objectively, I think both Kevin and Josh are better than you at watchers and better than me. At least Kevin is for sure. I mean, like winning, came, winnings, you bro. came through in winning, the clutch. I'll give you that. Winning, came winning. In the clutch. I won in the tournament, <laughs> and I dominated in the points. Yeah. Gotta give it to you. Well, Jess, since you dominated in a six-month-old washer toss. And you dominated today on your uh, your alcohol content on your beer. Why don't you tell us how your drink was? Stout's gone. Pretty tasty. How much of it is gone, though? 75 mils. <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of amount that I don't want to recognize. <laughs> but it was good. It was good to take the alcohol content. I'm still tied for first, not winning, but you know, still tied for first. It's, it's still good. The Russian Imperial Stout from Walkerville Brewery, ten percent, sort of big, super good. But it's like it's only one though, so really, it should only count as like five percent. You know, says the guy that hasn't even says the guy that hasn't even shown up for fucking alcohol content and like. Since last season, yeah, I'm at a six point eight. That's fucking not bad. What a bitch, man! That's like not even close <laughs> to me. <laughs> but there's two of them, and they're four hundred and seventy three. Anyway, we'll, ha- we'll we'll have to get little Mitch to see to make sure that you fucking drank both of them. 
Yeah, little man should be supervising me one day. Not yet. He could start fucking editing. That's what he can do. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, how was your beer? My Mad Tom. I like it. Muskoka Brewing. It's only, I think I took the, uh, the claim of the 6.4. 6.4. Uh, unbelievable by the uh, lowest amount of alcohol my haul this uh, week. I liked it. I liked it. I was going to pull out another one, but I wasn't going to. Not that there's a 10 and whatever else here, but it's 6.4 is good. I'll drink this again. The Mad Tom. Enjoyed it. Liked it. It's got some kind of like, you know, ginger on the can. Pedro, that was yours, sir. Yeah, thanks, Kev. My, uh, my Skipper D's from Split Rock Brewing Company was, uh, it's got a, it's got that really IPA kind of taste to it, uh, which I know, Kev, you would hate, but I don't mind it. It's a nice, strong beer and uh, it's going down nice and smooth. I'm getting good to the IPAs now, bro. Come on. Have you ever drank one outside of this show? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that leads me to believe you don't like them that much. But anyway, yeah, Skipper D's from Split Rock Brewing right here in Newfoundland. It's good stuff. Uh, Josh, how was your beverage? Well, my Hades Imperial Coffee Stout from New Ontario Brewing. Uh, yeah, it, for me, it wasn't great. Uh, it, Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I'm just not a stout guy, <laughs> not a dark beer guy. Um, I did get through the whole bottle, or the whole bottle. Wow, it's a can. It's a can. Don't challenge me. It's a can. <laughs> uh, it was 9.2, so maybe that's why I can't tell if it's a bottle or a can. But uh, I don't know. As you continue to drink it, it did get better, but maybe that's just because you're getting used to the flavor. It was basically like drinking an iced coffee with carbonation with a shot of espresso. Uh, which you're ready to go yeah it just wasn't it wasn't great for me that's all you ain't going to sleep though no no <laughs> oh, I, I mean i got i got one more quarter of the football game to watch uh and i'm sure i'll be up for a few more hours still just because that's how i do after our fucking podcast i'm usually up until i don't know a while gets <laughs> you usually, jacked i'm gets tired. you jacked up i'm usually tired monday morning let's put it that way <laughs> All right, guys. Good show. A little long, but that's all right. So for here, everyone here at Points of Penalties, we'd like to thank you for listening and or watching. Please subscribe on YouTube right in this corner here. Or wherever we get your podcasts, please give us a like and follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Points Penalties. And until next week, stay, stay out, out of the penalty box. box.